have a committee of the whole at um, 7 o'clock in the uh, chambers. So, uh, first on the um, agenda this evening is communication. Oh, we need, I'm sorry, we need roll call. Okay, Ms. Seymour? Here. Uh, Mr. Moss? Here. Mr. Lance? Not here. Uh, he's here, he's in the back room. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Frazier? Here. Mr. Fertiasti? Here. Uh, Ms. Jordan? Here. Mr. Seiler? Here. You have seven members present. <coughs> All right. First on our agenda this evening is communication. <coughs> and uh, I have a request from Pamela Gerald uh, to speak. Ms. Gerald? <coughs> And you know the drill. Five, uh, you have up to up to five minutes, and you have uh, to state your name and address. And I always time my speeches. <laughs> Good evening, Council President and other members of Council and the public. My name is Pamela Gerald. I am an independent voice for Southfield. If you are listening to my voice via YouTube or audio reproduction, I can be reached at P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037-0155, or by telephone at 248-352-9188. I am just a phone call away. I have been to several study sessions with the Planning Commission regarding Walmart's request to open up a superstore in Southfield. The proposed location is 12 Mile and Southfield Road, the Old St. Beach Church. After reading the traffic study, I am not, and I'll repeat, not convinced that Walmart belongs in Southfield, but more importantly, not in that location. The traffic at 12 Mile and Southfield Road intersection is terrible and very dangerous. This intersection is one of the most deadliest intersections in the state of Michigan as purported. To put a Walmart in this location would only compound the traffic problem. In addition, the residents in that area will have their home security blanket pulled right from up under them. The reasons why a lot of these homeowners moved to Southfield and picked that location was to live in a peace and quiet environment. If the quality of life for my fellow residents is not what matters to this council, then I suggest that maybe we consider putting Walmart in your backyards or quite frequent. Uh, let's put it across the street from City Hall in the vacant lot. If all that Walmart promised to do is good for the city, why not close the golf course, put the Walmart there? but then we would do a disservice to the golfers in the city of Southfield. So we can't do that either. So let's value our fellow residents and not put a Walmart in their backyard. Previously at a regular televised meeting, I mentioned the perception of employees and residents alike that race still determines who gets promoted, who gets a raise, who gets an acceptable contract, and how certain sections of the city services are, are rendered to residents. It was stated that we don't discriminate here in this city, the city of Southfield. Let me tell you what's reported about Walmart. Walmart was, Walmart was found guilty for discrimination against blacks, Latinos, and women. Walmart was guilty of worker abuse and retaliation and paid a hefty fine of over $500 million. Just like Denzel, that's a half a billion dollars, billion with a B. If Walmart treats their loyal employees this way, how will they treat the residents of Southfield? Then and only then did Walmart hire a black CEO to try to render the problem. And as Chris Rock would say, that ain't right. Are we working really hard to develop a real standard in Southfield? That standard not only includes A1 City services, but it includes collaboration with the residents and neighboring community, Lakewood Village. I support that our neighbors and neighbors <coughs> do not want this Walmart. Let's not forget that the Southfield standard also means that we understand where we should allow businesses to open up and that those businesses fit in that section of the city because it will have a direct impact on the residents. Southfield, and that's a fact, is only a little over 26 square miles. <coughs> we're big in service, big in value. We have a committed staff and committed residents, but we're not so big in size. So listen to your residents in that area. They have spoken at the November 28th Planning Commission meeting with over 650 people present. They do not want this Walmart in that location. It's not about the measly $100,000 in taxes that Walmart may bring to the city because we give million dollar abatements from three to 12 years. What matters is unity in the community. What matters is the quality of life in Southfield, not the quantity of a certain race 
What matters is the voice of the people, and the people say no to Walmart. Uh, next, we have Gerard Mullen. And uh, we'll note, um, uh, Madam Clerk, that Mr. Mullen is not present. Um, and we'll move on to our um, special meeting agenda. First item is Brownfield Redevelopment Plan and Tax Increment Financing Authority Amendment. Uh, Ms. Freeman, you're going to handle this, correct? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. Um, Madam Mayor, Honorable Board, the City of Southfield has received a request from Tower Real Estate Ventures, LLC, Hassan Jawad, to make an amendment to a brownfield plan that the City Council has approved in December of 2010. The, brownfield, um, the Southfield Brownfield Redevelopment Authority um, approved their request on November 21st and we're bringing it forward for your consideration. Um, the developer is here along with their consultant, Mark Quimby, to give a presentation of their request. At, at the end of their request, we would like to have a Rule 10 <coughs> set a public hearing for um, January 14th. Um, I'd like to at this time bring up Mark and Hassan. They're going to go over their request. They're looking to add three additional properties to the proposal that they had committed in 2010. Thank you, Shelley. Yep. Uh, please state your name and business address for the record. Sure. <coughs> uh, Mark Quimby. Uh, I'm with FME. And we're located at 43980 Plymouth Oaks Boulevard in Plymouth, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you for your time today, uh, Council and Mayor. We'd like to go over uh, the amendments briefly and then answer any questions. Um, which button is it? Is it? Yes. Okay. So I wanted to give a brief overview of the original <coughs> project that was approved in 2010. Uh, there was eligible activities of 395000 and what that covered was primarily the demolition of the former People's State Bank and the lead and asbestos abatement prior to the demo. And then also the site preparation for the plan you develop. The microphone you can move oh, the I'm sorry. Or move yeah, the move move podium over and yeah. sure. speak into the mic so everybody can hear you. Sure. Um, so as I was discussing, the LLO activities are about $395,000. They covered the demolition, lead and asbestos abatement of the People's State Bank property, and also the site improvements that were eligible for the development. It was a mixed-use development with a one- to two-story structure, uh, depending on site plan approval, and uh, it was a mix of commercial, retail, and residential uses depending on site. The private investment was one to $1.75 million, job creation, 50 new jobs, and there was also an MBT from the state on this project. For this amendment, there's three new parcels that were added to make the <coughs> development kind of work better. Um, that will increase the total eligible um, activities by $258,000. And what that will cover is the demolition and asbestos on the three residential structures on those parcels, the additional site improvements on those parcels, and then you know the effort to go through this amendment process. The, uh, it will actually increase the private investment in the project from about from the previous slide one to one point seven five to about two and a half million dollars, and we'd like to have construction in summer of next year. This figure shows kind of spatially what's going on. The previous amendment was the areas in red that is not covered by the blue. The blue are the three new additional residential parcels. And then I wanted to go over just a couple key points for the plan. So the base taxable value of the parcels, all of them put together, including the new three parcels, is $622,000. That includes the value of the structures that are currently there. The plan final project it has a, we're estimating a value of $1.3 million, so that gives us that increment. So you have your base, and then what the property will be worth, and then only that increment, which is the difference between the base and the new taxes, would be what would be captured by the plan. The city council would continue, to, or the city and all the other taxing jurisdictions would continue to get the taxes that are paid on that base value. There's a 28-year reimbursement period to pay back the eligible activities based on the increment. And the administrative capture is the, the, the Southfield's BRA. They'll take 10% of that to, for their own management. And then we've got also in the plan, Southfield will create their own revolving fund at the end of the project with the amount of uh, tax increment that's left over. 
for within the plan year, which is by statute only 30 years, and then after that, everything will go back onto the rolls with the full value. That is the basis of this amendment, and we'd love to answer any questions or if you have any other comments or anything else on the, the, uh, the plan document. Uh, Mr. Yeah, the $622,000 includes the three existing structures, those are the houses? Yes. <coughs> and that's, that's 622000 Sure. So the 625 is for the whole thing. Pardon? It's for the whole pro the whole project. So all there's actually six parcels. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And those six combined have a value of six hundred twenty-two thousand okay. and some change. I, th I thought we were talking about the three blues. Okay. We are, um, but we want it to be clear as far as you know, there's what the actual total amount is because ultimately when you approve this amendment, um, it will be that base value and that increment, even though. We're only asking really for the three new parcels. <coughs> Mr. Lamb? Yeah. Do you want to speak? Oh, that right now. <laughs> um, Jeanette, the Jeanette parcel. I don't see uh, the, the item in blue. No, that, that's Goldwyn. Are there houses on Jeanette? Yes, there's a house on the Goldwyn property, the Jeanette property here, <coughs> and then the Hilton property here. Okay. I remember you saying when you came here initially <coughs> that you were going to close the street, Jeanette, the street facing Everton. I know you're not going to talk about it tonight, but it's on the plan, so right. whatever on the plan is, is on the options. Okay. Uh, why do you have to close the street? I'll defer to Mr. Jawad for that, but I know that uh, you know that's really a site plan approval issue. Uh, and Mr. Jawad, if you give your name and address. For yes, that. Hassan Jawad, Tower Real Estate Ventures, two six five nine five Evergreen Road, South of Michigan, four eight zero seven six. Mr. Lance, uh, to answer your question about the uh, the closing of Jeanette, uh, <coughs> it, it is something that. We have considered and have looked at in a number of our draft site plans. It is it is not uh, a final conclusion yet, and ultimately we will have to go before uh, planning and go through a site plan approval process where it will come before council once again. Um, and then to, to, to go back to your other question about why would why would we want to or need to, uh, it's, if you if you've been to the site, uh, we are looking to ultimately. Uh, gain as much parking as we possibly can to avoid parking from being from overflowing into the side streets, which is where a lot of parking is is, is currently going with the existing uh, center. That that because of the success of the current center um, and the depths that are currently allotted on Evergreen, we're trying to get 200 foot depths uh, for our developments on Evergreen and to prevent uh, vehicles from overflowing into the residential area. So uh, that's something that we can ultimately discuss. If, you know. Uh, this is approved, and we often make our way through site plan. Okay. Uh, will there be houses on Jeanette when you're building your development? Are you you taking down all the houses that are on Jeanette? The only, the only, uh, in, in according, according to this plan, there is currently only one residential home on uh, Jeanette, which is the 19751 Jeanette, which is right here, and that's going to be there. That 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 will that will actually come down. That's that's part that's part of the amended plan. Now across the street on the other Jeanette parcel, that is a a tree parcel uh, currently with a drain with a drainage ditch, and there is no there is no property there currently. No, okay. you will have your your uh, building staff right on Jeanette. Are you looking to replicate what you built on this side, but perhaps with two stories? Okay, so are you building on Jeanette? We are building the, the new the new structure is actually going to be on the bank site at two five two five zero Evergreen, just to the north of the existing site. <coughs> so what you see currently happening to the south with the buildings and the parking, you can almost take a, a, a rubber stamp, at least from a footprint standpoint, and replicate it on the other side of the street. So so at the bank site, it will be a shared scenario of both building and parking when all is said and done. Where is the opening to Evergreen on the other parcel? Cur 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 
cur currently you have an opening there on, on well actually on the other parcel the only opening to the bank site is the bank site has its own driveway. You cannot come in off of Jeanette currently and turn into the bank site. You have to actually oh, yeah. yeah. You have to actually come in there. And then there's an exit where there used to be a drive through on the other side. Those are the current driveways that are currently there. But you cannot come in off of uh, off of Jeanette or Goldwyn and actually access the bank site currently. Okay. It's, it's a fine help. Not an area. You can actually blow me off the street. I'll do the fine truck to get to that area. Okay. I, I, I will, without without getting into major details, <coughs> because, I, again, I think it's, it's best served for the site plan to answer your questions the best as I possibly can tonight. The concepts that we are working with, because this did come up when the brownfield was originally uh, approved by council, and it was it was a good point made by you, is a couple different things. One, we have already spoken with the neighborhood, and we'll intend to speak with the neighborhood once again before we do anything to ensure that the neighborhood is in support of what we're doing, as well as get our way through staff again and make sure that staff is is on board, as well as the various departments, police and fire, are on board of what we're doing. But I will tell you that we are working with a concept plan that allows us to gain parking on Jeanette without necessarily closing the street and leaving it accessible for emergency vehicles. And that's something that we're working on, and that was something that was taken into consideration based upon the last uh, 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 amendment or, or brownfield uh, uh, plan that was approved. That's the first positive thing here now. Okay. okay. But I will not approve something that allegedly you're going to do. <coughs> what are you thinking about it? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm telling you everything that I know up to this point, as opposed to it being any sort of surprise later on. I don't want anybody having a misconception that we are presenting one thing here tonight and coming back to do something else. And how about so the fire department? Have you control with them? We haven't submitted a site plan yet uh, to, to even get to that point. Currently tonight, we're just trying to get the brownfield amended to, to, to amend the plan that was already approved. Well, how could I, how could I vote for something else and another part of it? Isn't here, and we don't know what's going to happen with it. Can I just make a clip? This is really to set the foundation for a future development project. <coughs> so, right now, we're just setting the foundation as Mr. H um, Jawad moves through the process. When it comes to City Council, if you decide you are not in favor of what he's looking to do, you can deny it. And if he chooses to do something, you know, this is just the foundation for it. So you have the ultimate control when the plan comes back. But in order for him to get the <coughs> site prepared, he needs to get the properties added <coughs> to the brownfield plan. So if that doesn't make sense because I see a plan there now, uh, and then, no, to me it doesn't make sense. Okay. Because and you have a plan now, and uh, and there's something wrong, it's not wrong. I mean, it's, it's not correct yet about the fire department, about the safety of the area and all <coughs> that. It's, it's up in the air. That's something you're going to tell us about when you get to it. I'm, 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 I'm telling you everything that we know up to this point. I know. And that's why you don't see a plan before you... Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I am, and I'm doing my best to, ex to explain it and clarify it so that there are no surprises now or later. Mr. Lance, this is really about uh, giving the petitioner options. Um, yeah, but it's the beginning of everything else. Well, and it's it's all, it, will it's come back to it. it will come back through planning and, and eventually to this table. Tonight is just about amending a brownfield that already exists. <laughs> but I see a plan up there. <laughs> but there is no building. There is a, the existing <coughs> building was, uh, was erected. But it's the name of a street. There's names of streets and everything. You're going to do it. I, I don't believe that's true. What do you mean you don't believe what's true? What's in front of you? What do you see? <coughs> uh, what I'm looking at are three, adding three parcels and amending a brownfield. I know. I know. But how can you amend anything when, when we don't know the future? He knows the future plan. It's not, a, it's, it's not an exact future plan yet. Well, in order to for him to proceed, he needs the amended ground deal, so that he, it part it's part of his financing to redevelop the, these parcels. One of the properties is this correct, Mr. Dwight, that one of your properties, uh, a house that you're planning to demolish, 
is uh, riddled with mold. Yeah, it's, it's currently uh, it's currently condemned, and it is yes. it's secure. That's all besides the point. Yeah. All right. My answer will be no. You can vote for it. I'll wait until the whole plan comes. All right. right next, now we, no. next we have Miss Seymour. Yeah, thank you. Um, the the one parcel there, there's no house. The, the three parcels with the blue lines do they currently have homes on them? They do. And do you own those homes? Yes. You know, you know here, you Cur currently, the uh, the home that is on Goldwyn is. Uh, the home that Mr. Cyber uh, was, refer was referring to that, is, anyway. that needs to be tore yeah. down. It's, it is. It's 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 a hazard. It's filled with mold, and it's currently secured to keep anybody from getting inside. Okay. Um, the building department has also gone through there, and, and they concur that it does need to be demolished. The home on uh, at 19751 Jeanette uh, is uh, is currently rented, and the tenant is is aware of our plans. Okay. Um, and then the home that is actually on Hilton, I have personally been staying in so that I could have a bird's eye view of what happens with. Uh, uh, our properties and the development and, and knowing what that area needs. So the only person who would be relocated out of home is me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, <coughs> if, um, well, I guess, but several questions here, Mitch, in which order to ask them. I know um, we're a little bit familiar with what you have talked about. Um, but if, what is the advantage? If you, if you, the site plan. It's important for the site plan to have this in brownfield or commercials added to this. Why is that so? Can you can you mean later why is it important to have these parcels added to the brownfield? What advantage does that look like? Yeah, I, yeah, I mean... I mean are you planning on using those for parking? What's the plan for those? Uh, 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 ult ultimately, um, Parking is 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 really the the key for the residential uh, parcels. The majority of the footprint of the building is going to be uh, up closer towards Evergreen, but I'll think we need we are in we're in desperate need of uh, of getting parking. So these these other sites that, that are <coughs> I know you talked in the site plan about being one or two story structures. So that basically would be parking, regardless of whether you get a two story or a one story. You need that parking. Is yes, that correct. Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. yeah, I, I would note that if you go by there on a weekday, there is no parking uh, between the, the current businesses that are there. Uh, there's a handicap in the, in the parking. And obviously, if you um, add another building, you've got a more parking issue. It's, uh, the current situation is, is as it stands without adding these parcels uh, to our, our plans is restrictive and prohibitive to attract new tenants because if there is not enough parking, uh, we're going to have a hard time get, get, getting getting new tenants for the, for the new development, whether it's a single story or a two story type scenario. Mr. Can, I, can I follow up? Yeah, sure. Uh, where is the, where, if you don't get a two story, where is the new development going? It, it, would, it would go on the, on the bank site where Shelly where is showing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's not, nothing's indicated there. Or is it? Because right now it's all speculative. So there's no, there's no potential site plan for that. There is no plan. No plan has been developed. They are looking, to, again, just to set the foundation, and they are taking a risk um, and moving forward with their project in order to secure their incentives that they received from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. They need to have some assistance from the city of Southfield. <coughs> So we're, yeah, yeah. so this that. is just setting the foundation, and then the, the plans have not been officially developed. So, so, it, so you're saying it's in one or two story. It's not, it's not important to your plan to be one or the other. Um, I guess I'm concerned about I, I, speculative. I'll, things, I'll, 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 I'll say this, um, and from a, a financial standpoint and from a developer standpoint, if we cannot. Uh, fill 100% of what we build. We have. We're not going to build more than what we can necessarily. What we can necessarily fill. The last thing we want to do is to be sitting on empty space. Um, so if it's not spoken for, we're not building it, and that's the way we approached our first development. Um, and then uh, to, uh, to to demonstrate our commitment to this development and and this property when we originally came before you in 2010, um, we. <coughs> we have we have we have persisted and in, 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 in moved forward in acquiring additional properties even when the economy was 
really not in a position to be looking to build new properties or acquire new properties or attempt to even lease new properties. <coughs> I will tell you that five years to the date as of this December with our existing plaza that was built five years ago, we have not achieved 100% occupancy up until recently. We are now 100% occupied in, in the current development. So the last thing that I want to do is build something that we cannot lease out. So if it's not spoken for, the last thing I want to do is sit on empty space, okay? okay. Thank you. Right, thank you. Yeah, and this might be a question that uh, probably is reserved for site plan, but I don't know if you can speak to it now. When another development, probably I think it was just north of here, uh, came before council, there was concerns about the staggered back, and I see that there's a discrepancy between the far east border on Jeanette and the far east border on Hilton. Do you have a, are you going to, when you come up with a development expanding all the way to the border, or are you going to have a clean break? You're, you're referring to? Exactly right. Okay. Um, I can't force people to sell their homes, and I'll tell you that it sits up, especially the property on Goldwyn, and the building department will attest it to know what we went through to actually uh, acquire uh, that property. It was uh, quite a bit of work, um, and it, it took a, a, a lot of time and effort and energy to ensure that we were actually able to acquire that property without it actually going back to the bank and making its way through the mill all over again. So. Um, <coughs> We will do our best to maintain, as you can see, as straight a line as, mm -hmm. as possible so that um, it, it stays consistent from 10 mile all the way up to the golf course when, when right. all is said and done. Now one thing that is, that is kind of nice is on the opposite end of the 19751 Goldwyn property, Council has already approved that uh, a parking uh, space for what was the old kinder care. So we are starting to create a consistent line all the way to the golf course to allow for for that 200 foot depth uh, on everybody. Unfortunately, um, not everybody wants to sell uh, at the same time or feels that, you know, uh, sometimes it's, it's a financial scenario too because some of the properties may not be uh, affordable. It's, it's, it's parking. You have to remember that there's no revenue uh, to, to, to regain from putting in a, a, a parking lot. There's no square footage that you can lose <coughs> and, and regain some of your revenue. But we are, uh, we are doing our best to, to maintain as, as consistently a straight line as possible. It just happens that the property on Hilton is kind of a, a sliver half, a sliver, a sliver half lot. Um, but as the properties become available, and if it makes sense financially, we will continue to invest in the community and and, uh, and hopefully do some really good things on Evergreen. And you're you're alluding to my my other question, <laughs> which is the cooperation of the neighbors that are there. I mean, can you speak to that? I mean, maybe going from north to south. I don't know. I can. Um, with our existing development that is in place, we follow a standard protocol. We, before we ever put a shovel in the ground, we met with the neighbors, and as opposed to saying this is what we are going to do, we said, what would you like to see here, and what would you not like to see here, and <coughs> what works well for you, and what suggestions and ideas do you have? That is what we did prior to building the city center plaza, which is where the Jimmy John's is currently, and then. We also, uh, after we acquired the, uh, uh, the bank property, we actually sent out um, about 265 mailers uh, to the <coughs> Evershire uh, Neighborhood Association, which is basically uh, Jeanette Hilton, Goldwyn, uh, I'm missing one, Jeanette Hilton, Goldwyn, and um, the last street up to the golf, uh, up to the golf course, Fillmore. 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 Uh, basically hits all of those houses uh, in that neighborhood. Uh, approximately three blocks in, and we held a, a meeting at the Parks and Rec building and said, this is what we're potentially looking to do here before we do anything. We'd like to get some input, and we'd like to get some feedback, and as we draw near to site plan, again, we will go back out uh, once again and invite the neighborhood out to provide feedback, suggestions, recommendations, and I will tell you that from our last meeting, we did uh, uh, send out surveys after the fact that asked the neighbors various questions in regards to what they would like to see, what they wouldn't like to see, are they for or against the project, um, do they have any suggestions, etc. And uh, we have um, out of the <coughs> probably 40 or so people that showed up to the first meeting, we have approximately two dozen to 30 uh, responses uh, with the majority of them for or open uh, uh, to the development because I, th I, I think we have a proven track record. We've We've delivered upon exactly what we said we were going to with our first development. When, when the economy was tight, uh, we didn't cave to uh, 
cash for gold or fly-by-night insurance companies. We sat on empty space to be very, very selective uh, uh, to make sure that we put tenants who were going to, to, to be a benefit uh, to this area. And with our, our two most recent openings, we had the Just Bake that opened up in February, which occupied one of our vacant spaces. They are now the top grossing Just Bake of all 14 locations in the state of Michigan. Uh, the wing stop that just opened up, and it's very, very new, and they haven't even been in existence a little over a month. They are ranking in the top 20 nationally, which in ex being in existence for the time that they are is is unheard of and off the charts. So uh, what that's also done, and I'll, I'll give a, a little bit of sneak peek because I don't want to talk <laughs> too much about prospective scenarios, but uh, they are so happy with the results that they received here in Southfield that they said if in fact we did move forward and do something with, with a mixed use two story type development, they would actually be interested in putting their corporate offices uh, in such a development as well. So there's really positive things um, I, I think that uh, that can come out of this if we do it right and we are selective about, uh, about who, we, uh, who, who we choose as our tenants and, and, and provide a, a viable plan. That's incredibly encouraging to hear, um, especially with the neighborhood participation because uh, you don't hear from the residents, we certainly will. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, Mr. Frager? <coughs> yeah, uh, this is for my own education. Uh, when you made your presentation, you quoted the number of tracks on the, uh, your presentation. Sure. $622,000. In, in the book, it's uh, 654500 are, they, are we talking the same number, or are we talking two different numbers? No, there are two, diff there are two different numbers. The uh, the first number, the 654 number, yes. is, is, that's the total eligible activities, which would be the original amount that you approved, which is like 350 something. 395. 395. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the new number that you're approving now for this amendment, which <coughs> was the 258. Uh -huh. um, this 622, they just happen to be kind of close, so it, it, it's easy to be confused, but that's actually the base taxable value on the property. Oh, I see. All right. All right. I just wondered if I was misinterpreting I was. No, I, I triple checked it because my eye caught it as well because okay. they're kind of they're kind of close. So I just want to make sure I wasn't okay. mixing up what I was talking right. about. Well, is there anything else? If not, uh, we need a to uh, set a public hearing for this, which will necessitate rule. A move for rule ten. Support. Uh, it's been moved by uh, Mr. Prakash, supported by Mr. Moss. So rule ten. All those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, we have, uh, let the record show we have one now, uh, Mr. Lamb. Mr. Chairman, I'll move the uh, recommended uh, resolution and that's on page 3 of December 3rd, 2012. Uh, and Mr. Picasso, may I add that we're moving this because of the um, uh, uh, public hearing on we got the 28th, they said January 14th. The 14th, okay. okay. I'll support that. It's January 14th and still the 28th. Yeah, right, because we already have uh, a big agenda that night. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Prakashi, supported by Mr. Moss, uh, to have a public hearing on the Brownfield Amendment uh, for this, pro uh, this uh, site on uh, 25250 Evergreen Road, um, and 25210, I should add. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Lamb. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will move on to the second item on our agenda. That's the yeah, presentation yeah, yeah, for yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. parking and stormwater yeah. um, improvement yeah. project. Well, uh, Ms. Carlock is coming to the podium. Um, oh. uh, just remind the council that we uh, this now is the fourth uh, presentation <coughs> we've had. Um, Step by step, and uh, move ahead with the uh, improvement to the parking lot at uh, Inglewood Park. Is that a question now? That may, Mr. President. If, if you could pass down the presentation we just received, so I won't have to be talking. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, as Mr. Councilman Cyber mentioned, we have been <coughs> to you uh, about uh, three times on this project this year, just in terms of the grant application and accepting the grant. 
this meeting is or presentation is more um, in regard just to clarify what we're talking about and uh, the financing proposal for the project. You can see <coughs> the outlined areas, the existing parking lot. I think most of you are familiar with Inglenook Park. It is our most popular park on um, 12 mile road between Loster and Evergreen. So this project started out as a grant project. Staff had come to me and saying, you know, with this perpetual parking problem there, uh, what can we do? Is there anything we can do to expand the parking, alleviate some of this parking? Um, we frequently go on the grass for ball fields uh, type things, and of course the play lot is very popular uh, in this area. So there is an aisle right there. It's already existing. It only has parking on the north side of that aisle, so it's very easy to add 50 cars. Um, the aisle is already there for us. So uh, this grant is one of the, the Rouge grants that we have been getting in recent years. We keep thinking <coughs> it's the last round, but they um, are still getting money from the EPA. So we go back with kind of smaller grants than we originally did, like Carpenter Lake. Um, so it's a Rouge grant. It means that it has to be sustainable and environmentally sensitive. So this would need to be some form of pervious pavement. Um, we have lots at Beechwood and at Carpenter Lake that are pervious. We'll look at what materials are available. It has not been designed. Um, looking at the pavers, but more likely we're going to look at pervious concrete in this location. This major parking lot here, um, so the original parking lot, is about 20 to 25 years old, and so the surface is cracked and, and it's faded, and so uh, as long as we're on the site, we've decided to look at resurfacing the entire lot. So that's why the project got larger than the grant project. And um, <coughs> talking with administration, we're looking at a LERF loan for the project. Um, that would, you know, with our current financial situation, that would alleviate <coughs> some of the financial pressure of a large park parking project on, the, on our department. So there is a um, amortization schedule that's attached to your uh, council item and we'll be coming back to the next council meeting with a formal resolution to adopt that. Are there any questions pertaining to? Um, Mayor? Yeah. Um, as, we, as we put these parking spots in, is there any uh, plans to put walkways to connect them so if someone gets out of the car, instead of walking through the parking lot, is there going to be any, like putting a walkway along the other side of the car? Is there some kind of walking? Because uh, that always seems to be the issue. Yeah. Originally, when the grant, we actually had a sidewalk that entire distance. Um, the granting agency uh, said they, they wouldn't fund that. So mm -hmm. right now, it's not on the plan, but mm -hmm. if it fits within that budget, and I would like to put that in there. Because even if we use the same type of surface that we use for the walking, plant, even if it's not concrete, yeah, yeah. Be, yeah. Well, just then that would be so very easy okay. to do because that's quite reasonable price. Yeah. So just so that we're controlling the path of people walking, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not going back. I want to address way. something like we originally years ago we put the path, the main pathway mm -hmm. south, mm -hmm. and then we threw a grate across it. So exactly. That's something that drives me crazy yeah. a little bit. I want to fix that little issue there. Now the bioswell that's in front of the place case, uh, I usually think of a bioswell as being a dip. I'm concerned because the kids just get out of the car and they run in. And they the run in. Actually, that is a ditch right now. Um, yeah. And okay. so this will, obviously we're trying to look at something that's a not not as quite as mixed plants and, and something that's colorful because there's children there, mm -hmm. but also something that's tough, so if they do run across it, we're yes, okay and will. not not create a trip hazard. Probably with the bioswale, we're going to be able to lift that swale a little bit so it's not as deep as it is now because it'll permeate the water instead of mm -hmm. tracking it down. And again, with that, I was thinking if we put some defined gravel areas that it's if children wanted to run through there, it right. would not be, because uh, you've done a great job with the other biofilms, so I can imagine 
the uh, type of greenery you're going to put in there, just to uh, you give them an option. It's kind of like, well, we never in some spots there, and uh, you know, because as soon as it was up, we we never were able to grow no, grass. Yeah. Um, so definitely, we'll try to keep the kids in mind and and how they're going to get through there quickly. So my other question is, when you're at the place, our landscaping around the Marquisa has been not. Um, we haven't been able to get the grass, yeah. especially around the steps and that stone yeah. wall. So that's something I'd like to look at. I can probably look I at it like this project. I agree that because it's such a wonderful spot, but it looks like it's not. Up if we would have been able to put a six foot fence around it for a while, I mean, even during the opening and during the construction, it's very difficult. Keeps kids off. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll look at that area where we have erosion around mm -hmm. the, the, the rock wall and the steps up and see if we can do something like that. And I know that I know that there are children and families out there year round, but if we could put a temporary for the spring mm -hmm. that would keep it off until it can at least grow. that stuff could get grow. It looks like cats. Mm -hmm. I look at all the time and there's actually some dips <coughs> in the landscaping that kids fall on the time over, so they don't think about okay. it. Okay, take a look at that while yeah. we're there because I think that we could put that in within our budget. Right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, Mr. Prakasi? Yeah. Oh. Who's that? You. You. <coughs> yeah, in the uh, new parking lot, uh, the present one is going to be replaced or resurfaced? Resurfaced. And is it going to be matching the previous one that you've been No, we're <coughs> just going to look differently. It'll look slightly different, yep. We talked to the granting agency about just doing bioswales, and they said, you can just do bioswales, <coughs> you can just do asphalt pavement. We won't participate in that. So we want the grant to, and I think we'll have, you know, a little interpretive sign there that says, this is why this is different. I mean, we'll still try to make it compatible. Any other questions from Ms. Burton? I mentioned the other day, just making sure we can be single parking, I think it'll be a easier access in and out. We'll look at that on the west side, because yeah, that, that's a, a circular lot. Any other questions? I have one. Um, this is basically um, a, a, a sheet drain, right? It just yeah. rolls off. There's some catch basins in the lot now. I oh, think yeah, in the center. This, or this one, in, like in here. But as far as this permeable, yeah. there, there's still going to be There'll be the pavement and there'll be some kind of stone under that. It'll still have a pipe that, for overflow or whatever, if it doesn't drain. There's a catch basin out here. All right. Uh, any, let's see more. I do. Um, are you using pavers or using what's, what's similar to what we have on the uh, other side of the... I will not use the asphalt because I think we've all experienced what that product is like, but I have seen... You mean you don't like what's out here on the... This lot, because of the, the, you know, the parking and the turning and our, our summers are 100 degrees now mm -hmm. and it's just um, not tough enough. Okay. So I'm looking at porous concrete that I've seen at several trade shows. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's pretty tough. You still would have the cleaning issue on occasion to keep, the, keep it porous. But is it, is it it's not pavers? I'm it's not pavers. It's a port-in-place okay. product. I'm okay. still looking at the pavers, too, okay. but I would like to try the porous concrete. Okay. But it has, won't have that gravelly sense that I'll... It'll look a little gravelly, but it'll be, it'll be tough. It will not... Oh, you okay. cannot dis dislodge the stones or anything like okay. that. Okay. I have a feeling this one's a little hard on tires. Uh, I think wrong? the tires are a little harder on the pavement oh, yeah. than, than vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just soft material, and there's not enough binding material to support it so it's structurally. Really Each time you turn it, 100 okay. degrees out, you know, oh, you're, okay. you're, you're wearing on it. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, <coughs> this item will come back next uh, Monday night uh, at a regular meeting. Uh, this evening, Ms. Carlock is asking for consensus so that she can bring the formal plan uh, back to us on, on the 10th. So, Mr. Procosi? Yes. Mr. Lamb? Mr. Yes. Mr. Ma? Yes. Yes. And I will. You have a good time. Thank you. All right.
right. Um, next uh, uh, item on our agenda is municipal lawn uh, perimeter pathway route, and this is uh, um, part of the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Carlin. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. As you may recall, I was last uh, here before you to discuss this at your September 10th meeting, to dis discuss the possibility of installing a perimeter pathway loop. The genesis of this project was uh, the original intent and hope to make Evergreen Road accessible with the library and the municipal complex. And we originally came to you with the thought of simply making a connection from Evergreen <coughs> to the shortest distance and tying in with the existing loop system. Um, as, as the staff discussed it, agenda staff with other departments, uh, it brought to my attention that the Parks and Recreation has had a plan pretty much on the books for about 20 years of doing a circular loop in the front lawn. And I thought it was a great idea for, m for many reasons. As you know, we're trying to make the city center district more pedestrian friendly and also put life on the street. There are a number of ADA issues uh, with uh, the lack of accessibility to the front lawn, especially during parks and recreation events. And as we try to promote healthy living, and at 30 minute health heart, health, uh, heart healthy walk, um, two and a half times around the loop approximately would be uh, a mile. And a 30 minute walk is approximately a mile and a half for most the average American. So council said, okay, Terry, um, why don't you work with the city engineer, HRC, and other departments and prepare preliminary cost estimates and atten uh, identify potential funding sources, which we're bringing back here tonight. Now, when you get engineers involved, they want to make sure that all the bases are covered. And the engineer said, well, if uh, you know, we're going to have this four-inch sidewalk around here, why don't we make it five inches so a truck can drive on it? And then facility says, oh, it would be nice if we had a, a nice driveway path so we can get our trucks onto the site. Let's, let's uh, add a, a driveway here. And oh, by the way, we don't have our barrier-free parking spaces accessible in here. And we, we should think about drainage and removing trees. And I think we all agree that an eight-foot wide sidewalk is better than a five-foot wide sidewalk. Well, when all the bells and whistles were added up and you included contingency and engineering, now we have a $111,000 job. But um, the good news is the city center is very committed and excited to this project. And um, they've, they've set aside a significant amount of funds to support this job, similar to what they did in partnering with the city on doing decorative crosswalks on Civic Center Drive. Because of the um, ADA issues, Community Development Block Grant has a, a good portion of the money set aside that we've reviewed with HUD and said this would be an eligible project. We'd have to bid this out with the Spacon wage rates. We looked at um, the existing Metro Act, which is only a small portion. And again, we're talking about the area in red for phase one of the loop. But the uh, Metro Act funds would cover anything in the right of way. We also have a tree fund. And we looked at um, between Parks and Rec, the engineering department, purchasing, and myself, we could probably do the majority of the plans and specs in-house and have HRC either in kind or at a nominal fee, um, you know, review their final plans and help us <coughs> get out to bid. So tonight, I'm just looking for permission from the council to actually go out to bid, prepare plans and specifications, get real numbers, and come back to this honorable body prior to any construction. Our intent would be, if we could, we'd like to have it constructed in the spring of 2013 prior to any major events happen taking place on, on the front lawn. And by that time, we'll have real, real construction costs and we'll fine tune our funding sources. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council may have at this time. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Terry, how much is the city center well, they um, they initially uh, committed thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand? Yes, but they said uh, if you need more money, come back to us, and this is a project that we're uh, we're willing to support. Um, so I have my board meeting next week, 
And uh, one of the things that, uh, that we might be able to do is push one of our projects off to fiscal year 2013-14 and move, move this project up. So uh, they could possibly have almost twice as much money. I have a problem, quite frankly, with city center money coming on our property. I think they've got plenty of need for it uh, on their own site. And I, I, have a, I want to talk about this because I think I'm really not in favor of this project, and I want to tell you why. Um, Parks and Rec had, Mary Tyler had designed a, basically this idea, the, con the concept of a circular uh, walk uh, many, many years ago. It never got uh, approved as a project. It was never done, and there's a reason for it being never being done. Parks and Rec could have done it any time. It never came uh, forward. It was something that they would like to talk about or somebody talked about, but never got approved. And as I said, I think there's a reason for that. And my concern is that we're trying to make something, we're, we're basically destroying a beautiful park by putting in this walkway for something that we can basically only use in warm weather. Now, people, you can say that people will come out here and walk in the wintertime, but what you're going to find is this will be used for bicycles, <coughs> and you can put all the signs you want. It will be used for bicycles, and it will be used for skateboards. The, the other talk was that um, people in wheelchairs would be out there. Well, in the wintertime, I don't think they will be, no matter what we do. I am in favor of putting some access to the parking. I think we can do that. But I'm, I'm, I think that we can destroy a site that's a beautiful park right now, and I'm opposed to putting a um, loose project here. I, I feel that if people aren't going to come over here to walk, they're not going to bring wheelchairs in bad weather. It, it, I think it's redundant, and I think it's a mistake. We should be destroying something very beautiful. Through the chair, if I could respond. Sure. Um, first, um, Parks and Rec has a number of events. Um, on the lawn, and a number of people with disabilities, including wheelchairs, do participate in that. And they are limited access to, to those events. Our current barrier free parking is in this area here, and there's no ADA access to the front lawn at all. But that's what I said I would like to see done. Uh, this is located on the perimeter of the space so that it doesn't infringe on the green greenness or the openness of the events. Uh, I, I really do see this as, as encouraging walking um, for residents, for employees, and for businesses and the students in the community. Uh, and I do think that it will get used year round. Um, I don't think people are going to come here to bike specifically. One, uh, one day when I was leaving work here, I saw three uh, middle-aged women walking three abreast in the parking lot down the driveways, and I stopped, and uh, whenever I get a chance, uh, I try to walk every day out there at lunchtime in, in the early evenings before council meetings, and I talk to people, and I ask them, what would they like to see? What could we do better? And the f number one thing they said is put more pathways in. And I said, do you live here or do you work here? And they said, well, actually, all three of our sons are at the ice arena. And we come here a couple times a week, and we have a couple hours to kill, and we're just out walking. And it would be nice. And that's a whole, a whole other audience of people who come here that are not being served as well as we could be. Uh, and, and again, we're trying to promote healthy living. We're trying to promote activity. There's nothing that says this is a friendly community than seeing people walk down the street, especially when in twos and threes, whether it's during the day or evening. I personally enjoy a brisk walk in the wintertime. It's refreshing. Uh, and again, it's not about me, but um, the city center is, thinks this is a, a high priority. They want to continue putting benches and trash receptacles and doing those things, but they, they really do see the benefit of this, and we want to partner with the city. Um, and I, I'm not going to speak for Parks and Rec. I know Ms. Carlock's here, and she can maybe weigh in. I think design-wise, this, this has an aesthetic to it, a formalization of the Olmsteadian Parks plans. We have a beautiful alley of trees that people can walk between, so it's not like we're starting from a blank canvas. Those trees were planted 20 years ago for something like this. And uh, again, all I'm asking the council is to allow us to go out to bid. If prices come in double or we can't identify the funding sources, then we either have to change our plans 
or, or uh, you know, go back to the drawing board. Let me respond to that, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, I'm really not excited about the city center being excited about doing something on our property. They have plenty to do on their property. That, just, that does not move me. The problem is, you talk about so many things that CNR does out here, they don't do that many things out here. That I know exactly what they do, because I come here all the time. And to say that this is going, you know, it's going to be mostly available in summer. You, will, you can walk in the fall and when the weather's nice. I think it's destroying an area that should be, that is a park and should be a park. I'm not in favor of it. We have plenty of place to walk here. People walk in this building in bad weather. You know they do. They walk all the way around here. There's plenty of opportunities. I think this is a desecration. I'm not going to support it. Thank you. All right. Um, Mayor Lawrence. Yes, uh, I think this is a great idea. I too see people walking, especially from the 5,000, walking their dogs or walking that area. Um, if you go to uh, really vibrant um, communities, they'll have people that will, on lunchtime will literally sit down and have their lunch sitting on the grass. Um, some other things that are happening. Um, Green space is not supposed to be, in my mind, just for you to sit there and look at. It should be something that encourages people to enjoy it. And I think this will uh, this will be a great addition. Um, I have a question on this diagram. There's this circle here. What is that? That's that's through the chair. That's yes. the uh, existing uh, circle pathway in front of the library. Okay, that's existing. That's, that's existing. I think this is good. I can, you know, I do the mayor's walk at Inglenook. I can see, and we always have, um, that's pretty much the walking path in the city is Inglenook. I see this, and we have, you know, we talk about our young people that live um, in Lawrence Park and wanting to be outside and jogging or running or whatever. But uh, I really like this, and it, um, are we going to add additional shrubberies, or are we just going? What are we going to do with well, the landscape? Well, through the chair, um, we, we'd like to work the uh, pathway through the double row of trees that are <coughs> existing. Yeah. There, there are a few that might have to be relocated or dug up and replaced, mm -hmm. and then some additional trees will be planted. But that's that's all that's called for is just the few that um, might need to be adjusted in this area here. Um, and uh, you know, later on, other things like uh, markers and benches could be added. But I think the important thing is getting the walking loop in first. You know, we we talk so much, and, and I'm very active in the Let's Move program, and and we talk about community uh, providing leadership when it comes to healthy living and, and venues and and encouraging people to get out and be healthy. And to me, this is one of the ways that we as a community, and it attracts younger families to say, you know, I can go into a community, there's people out walking, it's, it's, um, it definitely sets a statement that it's safe. And it's, it's uh, to me, shows that leadership that we want a community that's healthy. We're going to support it, it doesn't cost us you know, we, once we build it, it's just a matter of people using it. Um, so I'd be like, I do do have one question. Because at Inglenook, we don't plow or anything. If it rains, it just rains. If we put sidewalk in there, will that then require us to have to plow it in the wintertime, or what would we do? Again, that's a, that's a decision that the city can make and work with Parks and Rec whether or not they want to maintain it throughout the winter or not. Mm -hmm. we, we know the people have footpaths. Mm -hmm. And if, if I could, um, if you're familiar with Bryan Park in New York City, the park that was located next to the library, the public mm -hmm. library, mm -hmm. that was taken over by drug dealers and prostitution and homeless people. And the city decided that we're going to recover this green space back. And all of the businesses chipped in. Now it's one of the most vibrant, thriving urban parks in the world. Mm -hmm. And people look at it, and, um, they have plays, theater, people sit out there for lunch, people walk around there, they play chess. Mm -hmm. And it, it is now one of the you know, top, not only tourist attractions, but it's a, it's a vi it was a vibrant piece to revitalizing that part of the city. Mm -hmm. Locally, 
Shane Park in Birmingham was another kind of underutilized park space that was a lot of parking lot and they decided to take that back and create green space, a fountain, sculpture, um, and program that space. And now it's the living hub of the Civic Center in Birmingham. And I, I see this park as, as being something akin to that. We already have a beautiful setting. There's nothing like looking at, um, to the north and seeing those beautiful fountains with the library and the, the, the majestic buildings across the street, the grandeur of Civic Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I enjoy seeing kids out playing frisbee, people walking their dogs, and the different events that we have. Okay. Um, I, uh, I'm going to respectfully just disagree with some of the comments said earlier because I don't think that this is an, uh, a vision that's just going to bring out cyclists or skateboarders in mass. Um, and even if it did, I don't think I would have a problem with that because. I think maybe you can expand on this, Terry. That this isn't an this is not an isolated loop onto itself. That this fits in with the broader vision of what we've been talking about um, for a while about developing across the street and making it more walkable. I think the idea is is that we want to bring people out um, and, and come uh, and enjoy it and better connect the city to the people who work, live, and play here. So can you? Can you talk about why this does actually better connect a vision of a more centralized, uh, developed area of Southfield? Well, I, I think our elevator speech is to create a vibrant, 24-7, pedestrian-friendly, mixed-use environment. And, and this goes a long way to doing that. All we can control is the public infrastructure and the properties that we own. Uh, we're working closely with private developers on trying to market their space and, and show that this has some synergy that the sum of the parts are greater than the whole. And uh, by putting life on the street, this is very visible. People, <coughs> whether they drive up and down Evergreen or they, they walk out there during lunch or in the evenings, the residents coming here, it's going to be an attraction to people to come and to gather. And it's about creating that sense of place. And you can't create that sense of place if you <coughs> don't have people on the street talking to each other. You, you can't, can't communicate as you're driving in different directions in your car. But as you know, if you're out there walking, uh, there's always that opportunity to say hello, how's it going, and, and strike up a conversation with people. And, and I'll even say that, going back from what was said at a meeting a few months ago, you know, I, I think that this would encourage smarter use of the front lawn to make it more of a destination place <coughs> that we can think about how, how do we creatively use that, how do we attract people to want to want to stay in Southfield after you know the clock ticks five o'clock and they go home. I think that this this creating a still m maintaining a green space, but creating an actual a sense of place to go to would help us out in, in creating uh, an exciting culture here in Southfield. Um, next, uh, Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. Yes. <coughs> I don't disagree with futuristic environment. Park looks good. It will be good. But where's the money coming from? And how much is it going to cost? I heard it hurry. <coughs> we have um, uh, in your packet, uh, <coughs> Mr. Froud outlined, there's a sheet from HRC with uh, an estimated cost. This is the uh, engineering uh, consultant figures, we wouldn't know how much it's going to cost until we go out for bid, which doesn't mean you're going to buy it. It just means you, you, uh, you put out feelers or you put out a request for proposals and you get uh, you get uh, votes from people. So uh, Mr. Crow is only asking tonight for permission to seek bids uh, for this so that we have a better idea of what it's going to cost. We, we have a cost estimate. <coughs> But um, in uh, these times, some of the construction companies are rather hungry and uh, are very competitive. So we might be getting more favorable figures than what's projected by HRC. Well, I see the engineering portion of it is over $100,000 already. Well, through the chair, that's the, that's the total construction plus the engineering costs plus con contingency. Yes, all right. That area on. Okay. And you don't think it's going to reach more than that? 
Well, we, we think that these estimates are very conservative. We'll actually get better pricing. And it depends on if we want to add everything. It'll come up to 200000 uh, I, I think it'll be closer to 100000 All right. Now, our property taxes this year are supposed to go down 8%. Our taxes will to the, to the people, the property will go down. There will be more foreclosures. Uh, so. All right, let me ask this. Back up. What's the timeline? When is well, if, if we could, we'd go out to bid this winter and construct in the spring, and there would be no general funds that would be obligated towards this construction of this job. General funds. No general funds. Where are the funds coming from? Community Development Block Grant for ADA accessibility, the city side. <coughs> um, there's some small amount of Metro Fund Acts, and then we have... Uh, we have a tree fund that could cover some of the tree replacement. Those are some of the initial funding sources. You're taking money away from the uh, city block lands that we give to well, charities and some through the chair. I believe this money has been programmed specifically for ADA um, compliance. So it's 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 above and beyond what money is allocated towards the uh, not for profits. This is a dedicated funding source just for ADA compliance. <coughs> it's compliance for persons with disabilities. So wheelchair accessibility, this has been allocated in, in, in the funds. And if we don't spend it on this, then you know there's a chance we'd have to turn it back. First of all, I never heard of that, but okay, I agree with, I can understand what you're saying. And you've already uh, proven that you can get the funds for it. We've already run this through our uh, representatives at HUD, and they said this is an eligible cost eligible project and the money sitting sitting there waiting to be allocated towards a project like this. That money is allocated to this already and the, and the foreclosures go on and people are stopping and people are not working and the park is being built. That doesn't make sense. Uh, anything else to that's enough, isn't it? I, I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. I don't think there's enough money, although there's money there for it, but that doesn't mean a thing to the people who live here. All right, Mr. Frazier? Yes, uh, several of us just returned from Boston, and we attended the National League of Cities, and once again there was a, a presentation, it was a was a workshop on uh, the last move by our first lady, and um, she wasn't there, but the, the project was talked about. Um, but when you listen to the news, Michigan's one of the fattest states in the country. Uh, we uh, uh, childhood obesity is running rampant, uh, and this walk can. I'm supporting. I was supportive of this walk because. It can give uh, Parks and Rec an opportunity to be creative on, on some of their programs on how to get kids off their job and out moving in their in the day programs. And people used to sit on their front porch. When, when I was a kid, people sat on their front porch and watched the neighbors walk by and talk to the neighbors. Well, this is our front porch. This is an opportunity for people to uh, meet and uh, meet their neighbors, meet uh, New friends, friends they had never met before. But uh, uh, I've been in situations where I've done some things, gone to places on a, a number of occasions, and then had someone come up to me and say, "You know, I've seen you here on several occasions," and strike up a conversation. So this this is an opportunity to do that. Um, we keep saying that we're trying to make this area a walkable area. And then to hear somebody say, well, not on my land, not on my front porch. Uh, I mean, that just really um, troubles me a little bit. But we had a speaker at uh, the National League of Cities that talked about how people uh, meet each other, and, and they call it collision. Uh, uh, you keep bumping into people and, and meet new people, and, and it's 
it's a way the world is changing and we've isolated ourselves so much that we've got to get out of this isolation and get back to uh, being communicative with other people meet other people of different cultures uh, we're so proud of our our diversity here in uh, in Southfield this would I think this would be an opportunity to uh, get everyone out and uh, meet new people. So I'm really supportive of it. Mr. Uh, Fercotti? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I have always been protective of the front lawn of the city hall. It's been kind of called a sacred place. Um, however, this you know, has been in the planning stages for quite a while to have some kind of access to the front and people could use it or often that was the whole idea behind some of the plans from Parks and Rec. And, um, and I am absolutely for it. I live right next to England Oak Park, and that is used extensively day and night to dark. They're still walking. And, and this gives an opportunity for people maybe at the library uh, to come out and, and walk or they're waiting for somebody in the library. I see them sitting by the fountain. And, and I think that's what City Hall should be all about, bring people into seeing what we do here at City Hall, where it is, even matter of fact, people don't even know where City Hall is. And uh, so I'm for it. I, I'd like to explore, though, if you can maybe put some benches in just not all the way around, but in certain areas. <coughs> maybe like the benches across the street where you see them off every rainy road. I know people walk the sidewalk, and they're not getting a bus. They're just resting and then continuing on. And I, and I think it's a good idea to maybe find some placements and that'd be up to the individuals to plan that. It's all just for that. Uh, Ms. Jordan. Yeah, just a couple of questions. What's the walking distance around the park? Well, I, I know uh, from my uh, schooling, it's 5,280 linear feet in a mile. So I, I think we roughly figured out two and a half times is a mile. So if you divide it that, it's about uh, 1,800 feet, 1,500, 1,800 feet. Okay, and I didn't hear a response in terms of shrubbery or do you have short shrubs or... At this, time, all, at this time, all we're planning on doing is um, doing some tree replacement and tree infill. Tall or short? Just similar to what's out, what's out there. My other concern has to do not so much as the, the um, project, which I do support, but it has to do with um, HRC and having them do in-time services when we're going up for a bid. Um, how do we make sure that we're not with any expectation that they may have that they're going to do the bid when we're asking them for in-time services? I think that's a fine line. Well, uh, through the chair, uh, again, I was originally directed to work with HRC that did the cost estimates, and we actually reimbursed them for their time for that. We were talking about in-kind services, possibly with the departments, and then just minimizing the amount of work that HRC did um, for some of the testing and, and review. Um, if we could get them to do some in-kind services, that would be great. But I understand what you're saying. To the chair, to our attorney, I'm not sure. I think, as we discussed this, we found there was a, there was sufficient expertise in-house to do much of what we initially had, you know, put put together here with HRC. So. Um, I agree with you. I think maybe to the extent we can find out what, what's left after the in-house <coughs> staff has put it together and we can we can see what we need at that point, but we certainly would keep that in consideration. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Crow, I have a couple of uh, comments. Um, clearly, um, we're experiencing climate change, and um, I mean today, although it was foggy, people were walking. Um, I was in a meeting this afternoon on this campus and watched people walking by. It was, um, here we are, December 3rd. So, But uh, I really favored this project and I uh, and actually I'd like to see more. Um, as I mentioned before, um, what I like about this is that it, it connects 
the world beyond on the other side of Evergreen uh, to the library to the Civic Center and uh, you know my uh, if um, money were an object uh, my pipe dream would be to have a path from the back of the property where Lincoln ends uh, so that people on the east side of uh, Southfield could walk to the Civic Center to the library to the, to the uh, Parks and Rec um, there is there is a trail back there existing with wood chips, but you know, it's not, it doesn't it doesn't really connect. And um, this really is about a sense of place. So um, uh, I, I certainly am in favor of this. But uh, I have one technical uh, or minor thing to you might want to look at. Years ago, um, there was a very very large tree at the very southern end of uh, right there. Yep. And to the uh, tree was sort of ailing, but not to speed its demise, which eventually it did have to come down. Um, when the lawn was re bulldozed, a dip was made so that um, it would not interfere with <coughs> the roots uh, of the uh, tree. Uh, we now have the tree has been gone for a number of years, and we had this dip, and it would seem to me that um, we wouldn't want the dip anymore. Right, and, and through the chair, th that was one of our observations when we actually walked out there, and I got the whole history about how we tried okay. to save the tree, yeah. and part of the land balancing, as they scrape off the area <coughs> for the sidewalk would be leveled off over there. Put into the dip. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, yes, Mayor. So will we be able? To, if someone coming out to the center across the street, will they be able to have access to it? Where it, r phase one was <coughs> putting the loop in. There's an existing sidewalk that goes here that they could, you know, cross into the whole loop. And then there's a couple places where it actually will touch the existing sidewalk. Future phase, when Evergreen Road gets redone, is another oh, additional connections. Okay. Yeah, we don't we don't want to throw good money against bad. Yeah. So yeah. there's going to be like the phase one, which will get 95 percent of it complete. Mm -hmm. And then uh, areas in, in yellow indicate when Evergreen Road gets redone, that's where the connections would be. And this is a possible future phase <coughs> of making the library more accessible and their mm -hmm. fountain and the patio. But at this time, we don't have the funding to consider that. Okay. Uh, what we need tonight is a rule 10 to um, uh, and then a motion uh, to uh, authorize the <coughs> planner to go out and seek bids on this item. So uh, support moved by Mr. Moss, support by Mr. Picasso for Rule 10. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, we have one opposition. Um, uh, there's two now. Oh, I didn't hear you. Um, uh, Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we uh, send this out for bids uh, and that it come back to us in a reasonable amount of time. Support. Right, we have a motion uh, by Mr. Picasso, supported by Mr. Frazier, to uh, authorize the planner to keep this on the uh, front lawn loop. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Two no. Okay, motion to carry. Thank you very much. Question? Um, Ms. Maria. Uh, is the library participating in this project? No. Or waiting until they're, they're waiting until future. Okay. All right, Mr. Uh, Matt? Yes, I. I I'm basically not opposed to all this, but the timing is wrong, just like all the delay. Okay. Okay. The people, <coughs> the people are going to look at this and say, hey, I can't afford food, I can't afford to live. The city is spending a couple hundred thousand dollars for trees or sidewalks. What are you going to pay? What do you to say? This is uh, part of uh, hopefully helping the development across the street. Uh, our sense of place. <coughs> the millionaire. Um, I don't own the millionaire across the street, but they take that tax money. That's what they're giving back to us. They take our tax money, the small assessment money that they use, and make their donations to whatever project they want. That's crazy. And I'm not finished yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell these four foreclosed people to contact Mr. Fraser. And I'll tell them to come look at the <coughs> park that we created out front. It's been $150,000. Okay. 
for the part that we yes, have. Yes, it was my idea. Yes, That's right. right. Yes. Yeah. Is something wrong so, with it? No. It's handicapped accessible, too, at no, that but time. The, the sidewalk will complement that part, make it make it easier make for people it. to get to the park. I don't say it won't. I didn't speak against the project. You would no. That's about yes. as, that's about as good as you can I get. I said, not now. We don't have the money. Even though it's grant money, we shouldn't do it yet. But okay. I think one of, the, you know, one of the things that we've done over a period of time is we built this into a campus. And we've We've advertised and we've used uh, the uh, advertisement to say a whole family can come here and s spend a much of their day. Some can play ball, handball, tennis. Um, <coughs> they can swim in the summertime. They they can do things. But there are some people that don't swim. They don't play handball. They don't play beach ball. But they do like to walk. So while the rest of their family is doing other activities. They can come out here and exercise and, and still continue to be a family. So this makes this a camp, this campus a uh, family-friendly place. And um, we we have one more. Uh, yeah. No, I, 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 my my biggest, I suppose my biggest objection is since we're a narrower sidewalk, I find it a lot more acceptable. But you know, okay. having said that. Well, that may be an option if the bids come back extremely high, certainly. Uh, yes. Uh, it's time to 7 o'clock, and I don't know if we wanted to continue. Or yeah, I want to continue, and we're, we're going to finish this sign ordinance. Yeah, it's very important. And then we, we need to discuss briefly uh, a calendar item uh, as well. So um, uh, I, I would like to move on to proposed sign ordinance, Mr. Gardella and Mr. Connerford. Um, while they're uh, getting ready, um, we have discussed the sign ordinance plenty. Tonight we are just limiting this to the small piece on the retail uh, LED signs. <coughs> we are not talking about ground signs, pole signs, uh, message Words, anything like that. This is just um, a little piece of it so that um, we can uh, we can get um, help out to our gas station owners, particularly in the winter months when they're trying to change the prices uh, in uh, cold weather. Mr. Yeah. If, I, if I could start it, and then I think that's kind of how we worked out. Yes, yeah. or so. Um, what I did here was obviously worked with Ed in particular and Carrie. And we went through and we have made proposed changes, those are the bold capitalized changes that you see um, starting on page four and five. These are within the definitions of the existing sign ordinance. And what this does now is permit LED operated product price signs for gas stations. And it then goes through and, and puts the parameters of, of what these signs should look like. And so for example, you know, it, you'll see that uh, the first one talks about how often could that, that price sign change, and we'll, we'll come back to that. The second uh, would talk about what's the brightness standard that would be permitted. And so there's a standard now that would be set forth within the ordinance, and, and basically that's what Mr. Gardella has come up with. Um, the third one would be that there would be some kind of an automatic adjustment device within the sign itself, so that it, the brightness of the sign, product price sign, would change depending upon if it's a cloudy day, if it's nighttime, if it's bright sun, and it would do that. The fourth uh, section deals with uh, a certification responsibility by the sign manufacturer that this sign has been preset to the levels of brightness and so forth that we've established in the ordinance. Um, the, the fifth one talks about um, if uh, the sign malfunctions so that we don't get something that aesthetically, you know, it doesn't doesn't appear uh, something that we would desire. The whole sign will just go off. It'll go to basically a dark screen, as opposed to having a little bit here and this part out. And then finally, um, that there would be a non-glare panel, glass panel over the top uh, that uh, that obviously wouldn't reflect. So um, I think we've gone through those changes. I think Mr. Adell, obviously, who's the expert on this. Um, has, has been comfortable with what we've done, and the only discussion we had still had was how often can these change. 
Um, that is a, a real pertinent issue when we get to the electronic message centers that we're coming back to with that ordinance in January. So we talked again and we thought maybe the recommendation would be let's be consistent here so that the recommendation when we come in January will probably be somewhere in the area they can't change more than one time per minute. And so that's kind of what we're, we're recommending here. And with that, obviously, um, I don't know, Sue, you did such a good job with that. It's almost nothing for me to talk about, uh, which is nice. Uh, we're, but we are talking about allowing the gas stations to use them on their existing signs that we have now, as we discussed. Um, the issues with the timing, I think probably once every 60 seconds, if you look at it, even the time to change the gas price on a computer is going to take you at least 30 <coughs> seconds to even change the price. So 60 seconds, I mean, hopefully our gas prices aren't going up and down every 60 oh. seconds, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But uh, that was really the only piece that, um, that we had left open, and um, I think consistency would help. Uh, with our future talks to have it consistent with what we may propose in the future and so Sue pretty much outlined that better so than I we, can. We kind of wanted you to see in a study session what the language would look like and if there's consensus you will see the ordinance amendment on for next Monday the 10th for adoption and introduction. There also was discussion and obviously we leave this to council about doing this as an emergency uh, ordinance so that they could the gas issues could order the equipment and maybe get them in time uh, to be of assistance if we have a bad, we bad weather, bad winter weather. So that's another option. But right now it will be on next Monday. Are we grandfathering in any We're not, we are not talking about the height of signs, nothing. All we're talking about now is an existing gas station can take an existing sign that's permitted or been given to the DBA and they can now go LED on the product price sign. That's Just all that we're doing. Okay. Just this Correct. section of the price. We're not Correct. talking about anything else Something on the Something else side. changes. Correct. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any other discussion? If not, I want to get a consensus. Yes. Joanne? Yes. 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 We're not moving anything. We're just doing a consensus, consensus. tonight. Yes. This will come back on the 10th. Oh, okay. You're, you're yes. agreed? Yes. Yes. Okay, Ms. Seymour. Yes. 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 Yes, but I would like for us to review the garden signs and hold signs at a later date. We are. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. And uh, I agree, so we have a consensus. Before we adjourn, um, uh, we, uh, we need to have uh, changed the schedule slightly. Um, uh, before we adjourn, we need to change the schedule slightly. Um, we had a number of things. Uh, very heavy duty things that were tentatively scheduled for January 28th. Excuse me. Well, I'm actually I'd like to get through. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so we can get in there. Um, so uh, what we're tr attempting to do is move things off of the 28th agenda and put them uh, either on January 14th. Uh, we have a cow study, uh, a, a cow scheduled for that night. We can do a cow at a special meeting so that we can have the uh, public hearing on the brownfield as well as on the funeral home uh, uh, property uh, matter up on 12 miles. Also, um, I would like to add a meeting to the schedule for December uh, 17th. That's a Monday, it's unscheduled, and it would be a study session. Um, and I, unless there, we will, um, we're going to vote on that next Monday, right, to set that meeting? Mm -hmm. We can do it tonight. Or we can do it tonight with a little time. All right. I'm sorry. What is the purpose of We have uh, uh, several things to discuss. Um, I have a request from Mr. Percati to discuss the uh, travel policy. Uh, we want to bring back the um, uh, Public Arts Commission, another uh, further discussion on that. We want to, uh, uh, them down and check my notes, so, uh, we want to review the taxi cab, um, where we are with the taxi cab uh, licensing, uh, and we have um, some code uh, alterations, uh, additions to, to code that were approved by the Neighborhood Services Committee in November and need to come to the full council as a 
report from the Neighborhood Services Committee to full council so that uh, the, the council agrees they can be adopted um, in January. Those are the things that are on the agenda. I know Mr. Uh, Charette at some point needs to do some year-end budget adjustments. And it, it might be that evening or else or the 10th or, or the 10th. Or the or the so um, that's why we're meeting on a uh, proposed meeting on the um, 17th of December. Is that the only change in the change? The 14th uh, is scheduled as a study session. We're proposing to change it to study session and uh, uh, a special meeting for uh, two um, uh, site plan requests. For January 14th? Yes, yeah, actually Brownfield, yeah, January 14th. Okay. It's on the schedule as a cow. Okay. Okay? So I would entertain a rule 10 to amend the schedule if someone would do that. So move the board. All right, so move uh, by Mr. Frazier uh, and support by Mr. Moss for rule 10. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Uh, motion carries. Then I would entertain a motion to uh, set a uh, cow meeting, uh, committee of the whole meeting for December 17th and uh, to call for a special meeting on, um, in addition to the cow meeting on January 14, 2013. Or, I mean, I move, so moved. Uh, moved by Mr. Frazier, <laughs> supported by Mr. Moss. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So it's a cow and a special, is that right? Right. Uh, and the second one would be the regular. Right. A regular meeting, not a cow. No. No. The, the second, we already have a committee, the whole meeting right. scheduled for January 14th. So you're talking about We're a special meeting prior to? Yeah. So what time do you want that to start? Well, I already have a meeting scheduled. So, but is it a regular so that you can take a vote? You're going to actually We're conduct gonna a public hearing? We're going to have a special meeting and then we're going to have a cow. Do, do we have a cow scheduled? Mm -hmm. Do you want to just make that a regular? Well, I wasn't um, quite sure because uh, we may have other things to just discuss that night. So I wanted to leave the options open. Well, we could change this later. But if you have a, you, you just scheduled a public hearing on the Brownfield for, for oh, January 14th. Right. Exactly. So you need a regular yeah. meeting yeah. on that yeah. night yeah. to accommodate well, the public hearing. Yeah. 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 Yeah